Hello there, YouTube, brothers and sisters. Um, hope you all can hear me. I'll try to talk loud enough that... I've noticed a couple of my videos are getting kind of quiet. And I've got it a long ways away from me over here. And my oh, sorry, Bella. Sorry, Bella. We'll see if we can fix that a little bit, get you closer. There's a little closer. Sorry. Okay, well, she's mad now. That's okay. Oh, legs were getting sore. Um, I wonder if I should start a new video. No, we're good. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about God. Um, I'm going to move this over just a wee little bit. Because... Sometimes really wonder if we really, really ever sit down and think about who our Heavenly Father is. Our Heavenly Father. That's what He's called. Abba Father. Our Heavenly Father. Um, we're considered His children through adoption, co-heirs in Christ, the children of God, um, and he's God. This comes up, oh, welcome back Bella, this comes up because uh, I had a fella there who was looking a little stressed out about the earthquakes that are happening there today because they're just little ones 7.0 wow I hope everybody's okay it wasn't far it's supposed to be like a hundred miles from Japan that's not good hundred miles out it's probably a big wave I haven't heard anymore so hopefully we'll be okay there but I didn't know what to say so I just posted Psalms 23 and as I was started to read it because I usually put it in King James Version <clears throat> I didn't and so it would have put it in I think it's English Standard Version no Revised Standard Version which is there's been a controversy some controversy lately about um, translations and whatever okay now and I have heard some things and I've seen some things whatever the Lord can speak to you. Now, this RSV, it makes it easier to understand than the King James. So I started to read it and I thought, you know what? It's God. And I don't think my brothers and sisters really I don't think we get it good enough. And I'll include myself in there, okay? I, I don't like to, I don't want to be, I'm not here to condemn anyone at all. This is about trying to share what I learn or understand or think or whatever about the Lord for your betterment, for your edification, for growth in the Lord. I'm not trying to condemn anyone, go, you should have this or you must do that. Like I had somebody feel condemned about or whatever that I said about the first commandment that Jesus said for love God with all your whole heart soul and mind and they felt like I was being legalistic saying you have to as if anybody could but I mean it's not a bad goal to shoot for anyway um, <clears throat> who is God well here's who God is Psalms 23 is David right and he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death is an actual valley and um, this is what David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. God. God is with him. That's what he's not he's not saying he was with me. He said, For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You hear any doubt in that? I sure didn't. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No doubt, no fear. Walk with God. Why? Because He's God. He's God. God. He's omnipresent. He's omni, omniscient. He's all, every omni there is. He's everything, you guys. <clears throat> David didn't fear Goliath and the Philistine army. He was shocked that the army guys wouldn't, his army would like, what you, he's like, they're calling down God. You're his army. What are you doing? Oh, he's big and scary. <laughs> right? And God and David walked out there and defeated Goliath because God will win every fight he wants to win. We don't we don't have enough reverence for who God is. Our Heavenly Father? Okay. Everything that you can think of. He already thought of it. He created it. And everything that you can't think of, because there's a billion, million, trillion things we can't even know yet. Right? Because look at an atom, that, or whatever, I don't know, I'm not that good in science. Whatever the tiniest molecule thing was, the first little atom, I think, whatever, or whatever, the smallest thing we knew of. And they went, oh, see, it evolved from there. Well, now that we've got a better telescope, we can see that it actually took like 17 parts that had to be put together in unison instantly, boom, in order to be created that thing. That's intelligence. That's God. And that's one of a billion trillion things that we can't ever know. The trees, when you cut on a tree and a tree gets injured or lightning hits it or something, right? <clears throat> if it doesn't kill it, when it's injured, all the surrounding trees will send sap, life juice from their um, roots towards the roots of the hurt tree to help it heal. Trees. Moss has intelligence like you wouldn't believe. There's a moss that is made of tiny, tiny, tiny little things. Little tiny pieces. Little living little things that are floating on the water. And when that little living thing floating all by itself gets to the moss pile, or all the other little tiny mosses, billions probably of them are living, floating, when it touches, all the other ones know. Oh, ooh. Number two. 42,573,000 is here. Wiggle, wiggle. Just like when you wiggle your toe or you touch your toe, something, you know, you drop a, something on your toe, you're, you know it. Same idea. And it's 
moss. Scientists figure it's kind of almost the closest thing they can relate to for like the electrical sensory system of the brain. Moss. <laughs> And we use a tiny little portion of our brain. There's a whole bunch we don't even know what's going on there, right? Moss. God. Almighty God. Created all that stuff. Plus there's the universes. Whatever's in the universe. Stars thing going on out there. Space. And the heavens. <coughs> there's the realm of the angels. The heavenly realm. Oh my goodness. We have to just stick to earth. We're getting way beyond my comprehension. Exactly, right? God is so far beyond our comprehension. I have a sister who has a husband who is angry at God and said, well, how can he be fair when this happened? And I hadn't even read this. It was a harsh passage. <laughs> it's not even nice. Uh, and it's Old Testament and it's something about blessed are those that basically smash the babies on the rock I think it's in Psalms and what it was it was speaking about the enemy of God it wasn't the Canaanites but it was like them kind of people it was the wipe them out kind of people <coughs> And so that's what he meant. Because back then, that's how it was. How else can I explain it? Back then, that's how it was. But we don't blame God for that. Okay? Um, It can go so deep from here on who God truly is. It is very deep. If you start to really look into your Bible and change your thinking, repent, right? Repent, change your thinking, believe on the Son, right? Believe on Jesus. Yeah, I believe on Jesus. No, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you believe on Jesus? That he's the son of God? Yep. So what does that mean to you? Oh, a human being that is actually God. Mm -hmm. So who's God? Who is God? That he can manifest himself as a man. 4,000 years into his six or 7,000 year reign of men on an earth that he created with a word <laughs> and then breathed life into some dirt and then became a perfect example of what this creation would be as God as Jesus that's God so beyond our comprehension and understanding so far beyond our comprehension and understanding for us like he said you question who I have mercy on really that's what he says in the Bible you question who I have mercy on and I paraphrase everything horribly but he says that right because who are we to question him like he took Job up and showed him like just the inner workings outer workings of like can you imagine having to figure out the ocean for one day and make it work um, God is able to make sure that that little bit bird gets fed if he needs to knock it off from somewhere else and do the thing the little bird's going to be okay because he's God's bird and he's God he's made it so the trees and the grass and the water and the air and all of this is now fallen it's it is so beyond our comprehension God's workings Right? It's way beyond us. So, we can't be getting mad at him, for starters. Um, the only thing we could really do, from a layman, common sense point of view, 
is read the directions, right? When you get a new something, it usually comes with directions. How to either start it and run it, operate it, build it, clean it. it usually has directions. <clears throat> well, luckily for us, so does faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. It comes with directions too. It's in the last half of the Holy Bible. It's confirmed in the f whole first half there, but um, God is doing something right now on this earth where we live that is outside our ability to comprehend. That's what he tells us, that it's, it's just, it's too much for us in our little brains here to understand and comprehend, okay? What we know on earth here today, our intelligence, our um, artificial intelligence, our modern technology and all the everything we understand and know right <clears throat> and yet we're using a little tiny bit of a great big honking brain right? and our greatest possible mind ever just cannot comprehend God just can't he's too much for everyone is God. Now, with that being said, when he says, fear not, when he says, greater is he who is in me, than he who is in the world, the devil, versus God who is in me, the Holy Spirit is within me. If God be with you, who could be against you, right? If God be for you, who could be against you? Uh, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Uh, why? Because he's God. If he can create every, absolutely everything and do everything and make everything, everything, you don't think he could protect the little old Kev if he wanted to? Like when he was kind of showing me in a whatever, however, about discipleship and following him and trusting him to feed me a cheeseburger or whatever to feed me and, you know, just trusting God, right? For everything. And he's like, you don't think I could feed you a cheeseburger? After showing me a story how he would take care of birds. This tiny little bird can only hop, so this other bird flies like the eagle. And he goes over, and the eagle, of course, scares the little crow, so the crow jumps up. And, well, when he does that, the robin that had snuck up there and was doing some bird feed or eating, he knocks some bird feed off, eh? And flew away, because he was scared of the crow. But the bird feed fell where? Right in front of the little hopping bird, because that's God's little hopping bird, and he needed some food. And you don't think I can bring you a cheeseburger, Kef? That's kind of the impression I got, right? And I'm like, wow, yeah, I guess he could, eh? So all I have to do is trust God with everything in the world. And he'll take care of everything in the world because he's God. And I will tell people that Jesus Christ, his son, the one and only begotten son of God, is the Messiah. That's the true Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born of Mary, who married Joseph afterwards. That guy, Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. He is my King. He is God, manifest as a man. The one and only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. And I want to share that with the world until they stop me. Until everyone in the world knows Jesus, 
or the world stops me. Because the world isn't going to like me. And that's okay. God can take care of whatever he wants to take care of. God can do whatever he wants to do. He's God. God can protect me anywhere and any time. And if God sees fit that said bad guy needs to come and take my stuff, maybe said bad guy needs my stuff, and hopefully the Holy Spirit will have an utterance. Or show whatever, right? That's all I ask for. Glory go to God for that, whatever it is. And if said bad guy needs to kill me and take me, send me home to Jesus, so be it. All I ask is that I have said utterance given by the Holy Spirit, right? So that hopefully the bad guy finds Jesus too. Because that's all I want, is everybody to know Jesus. Because, I mean, there was nothing special that made me deserve to be able to spend eternity in heaven any more than any other human or any less. We're all the same. We're all the same. We're all freaking human, you guys. Don't get all super heavy duty over religious on me, get over legal on me, and get over word powered or any of these things. Because I don't care. I don't care. I do care. I love you guys in my heart. But when it comes to certain things, I don't care. I'm going to stand on the Word. I'm going to stand on the truth. I'm going to stand on Jesus. And I'm going to do it in a pair of sweats. And my old camo hat, maybe. Maybe a leather jacket some days. Some days I'm fresh shaved. Some days I'm not. Some days I'm really happy, loving. Some days I'm crying. Some days I'm angry. Every day I'm still kept. Every day... I'm still a child of God. <laughs> you remember in the Bible, Jesus, he was talking. And they said, well, how will we know it's you, Lord? Paraphrasing. And he said, well, when you fed me, when you clothed me, when you gave me water when I was thirsty, you visited me in jail, that stuff. You ever think about that? And the one about careful who you uh, turn away from, with strangers or whatever, because you might have had dinner with an angel or whatever. It's God, man. God's working. Trust Him. Have faith in Him. Love Him. Try to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind. I mean, yes, it's impossible for us to ever accomplish these things, but why would you not want to love your father even more than you do already? I mean, love's a natural thing. But to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind just simply means to try to pay more attention, try to put a little bit of effort into living a godly life. That's all. I can choose to live this godlier kind of a life. I mean, I'm no pastor minister guy either right but I can sit here with a Bible and a few Bible apps and some YouTube Bible people and some Bible guys on TV and I can crank up some YouTube music on TV there you know like uh, take your shoes off Moses you're on holy ground for I'm the Lord thy God Smite that rock, Moses, for I'm the Lord thy God. Rock breaks, water comes out. He's God. Trust Him. Trust Him. Jesus said, when I come back, will I have any faith? Or will I find any faith? No, will I have any? That means, will we have any? when he comes back will he find any faith you know what's it mean to have faith in Jesus to believe what he said and follow it 
to trust him. I can choose to do the will of God, or I can choose not to do the will of God. I can choose to live a godly life, or I can choose to live a worldly life. These are my choices. They're all my choices. And it's not a salvation issue. It's only an issue because I am saved. If I wasn't saved, it's not an issue. Right? If you're not saved, you're living a life of sin because you're living in sin, because you are sin, because you're dead. You've not been reborn in the Lord. This is getting long, but it might be three hours. No, it's probably not going to be. But you know what? My whole point behind what I'm trying to get at is that God is so much, so, so much bigger than what we give him credit for, maybe, out here in the West. Probably more so, like, not really. When you look at the whole world, I mean, well, no, there's some places that they have some reverence for the Lord. But, man, he's so much more, like... I feel, okay, here's my personal feeling. I don't feel like I'm living a godly enough life. Sorry, I have something going on in my eye. And um, I feel there's always room for improvement, right? Do I feel condemned for it? No. But I see room for improvement, right? always right um, doesn't matter what you're doing and this is what I'm doing I'm trying to live my life for the Lord so that being said the whole thing I'm getting at is we don't see who God is it's we don't look big enough and with God yes I do mean Jesus because Jesus is all, all of God manifest it's a man Two separate entities, one being, sort of, because the Holy Spirit also is part of that one being, but there's three of them. Yeah. <clears throat> but we don't give credit where credit's due, I think. We don't trust enough in the Lord to protect us you know and I think we look at trials and tribulations in our life the wrong way I really do um, which is not con condemning again because it's natural it's a natural reaction it's what we're told how we're told to, it's how we're brought up to be so it's not anyone's fault either, really. Um, but we look at things wrong. And mostly we look at God wrong, in my opinion. I mean, I know He's God, and He had a plan, and He laid out His plan, and He said what's going to happen. And it's happening. And it's going to happen. And He explains everything including the stuff that to us as humans the evil it's explained it's explained and it's dealt with it's accounted for and there's a verse in there somewhere mm, Corinthians Romans something Romans I think probably Romans 8 about um, these troubles aren't anywhere um, that we have today trials and tribulations <clears throat> that we have aren't anywhere near as bad as how good the glory of what we've got coming is um, to specifically touch on that one 
point before with the armies of people that were just destroyed in the Old Testament. God explains that he makes vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. And he does it for us. And he also said that he endured them for us. And if you look at the fact that Jesus endured God's wrath for us, and then you realize that God says that his vessels of dishonor, he endured them for us. That says something to me. And when you add the evilest of the evil, men, women, of this world, and then you look at the goats and the sheep judgment, there's no, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It's goats on the left, sheep on the right. Goats in the fire. Done. Not another word said. Jesus simply went goats to the left in the fire. Nothing said. Done. Never mentioned again. Just over. Hmm. God explains that he makes vessels of dishonor for us. And yes, I know there's other teachings that talk about different things for this verse. Picture as the potter makes a vessel, an earthen vessel. And then God fills it with all of the evil he can to the top. And when it's full, he caps it. And then he tosses it in the fire. The all-consuming fire of God. And destroys it in the fire. It's done. God made that vessel of dishonor for the purpose of dishonor. And when he was done using it, for its purpose he disposed of it and never thought twice about it because that's what it was created for that's the way I see that I could be wrong I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to tell me I'm wrong and that's okay it's just what I see it's what I see. And there's a lot more to it. But all of the people that <clears throat> went to the right, the people that God created that kingdom for, once this world is gone and we're on the new world, all of this pain and suffering and all of that is going to be gone. All of the things of the past are going to be gone like that. It's not going to be any... So this is irrelevant when it comes to eternity as far as what happens to us here, right? Like if I got a boo-boo and stuff, and I'm not trying to mock anybody who's been badly hurt. Um, point being, this is a temporal place for in eternity with the Lord our blessings are going to so outweigh everything and we'll have no memory of this the bad things here. so I believe we will remember people and stuff right but not so anyways who is God he's our father and he's in heaven in the tabernacle of God which is coming here it's coming here and um, from there he's going to annihilate devour this entire world eventually after Jesus reigns for a thousand years he's going to devour this place 
destroy it. Heavens and earth. And he's going to make a new one. A brand new heavens and earth. Whether it's this one redone, I don't know. I don't know. It's irrelevant though. It's just totally irrelevant because the other one's for eternity. And there's no bad there. There's no death. And it's eternal. We have a certain amount of time here on earth to make choices. The first and most important one, which gives us eternal life in Christ, with God, through Christ, is to believe on Christ, who is Jesus of Nazareth. And we need to believe that He is the Son of God. He died on the cross to pay our sin debt. It's paid for. Nothing you do, nothing you stop doing, believing on it. He was buried and raised from the dead three days later. By God. Seen by many. He defeated death. And he defeated hell and he defeated the grave. And you believe that that man from Nazareth is the Son of God? He's your Savior? Said you're saved. Going to be in heaven with him. The rest of the time is your walk with him. It's up to you. Okay? But it's God. I would try to have a little reverence. Okay? He's our king. He's our Lord. He's God. Alright guys. I love you all. I'm going to break it off here. And just... Hope that helps. People understand who God is and have some reverence like have it's not like I'm condemning no you don't have no reverence it's like have that reverence have that knowledge in your mind who God is because he's your father which means you're his child you're in an, uh, you're an adopted child of God if you believe on Jesus Christ as your savior then you are an adopted child child of God, sealed by God, sealed for eternity by God, creator of everything. Does that not kind of give you a little boost of, hey, I'm a child of God, fear not, what weapon can be formed against me, what should I do? Mm. share this knowledge with everyone you can why not if they kill me for it that's a reward in heaven everything bad the world can do to me is a reward that's why it says if you lose your life you gain it if you save your life you lose it what's more important your life here or your life with the Lord. Well, your life with the Lord. Believe on Him. Love Him. Follow Him. Read. Read the Scriptures. God speaks to you through the Scriptures. Another good bonus thing to ask for is discernment. Discernment and revelation. Discernment and wisdom. He says you can ask for wisdom as much as you want. If you want more, pray and ask them. More wisdom, Lord. You know, because it's not the wisdom of the world that he gives you. It's his wisdom. His understandings. You know? And he teaches you through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's with you all the time. The Holy Spirit's always here. Always. That's why if you have any sin conscious or whatever you want to call it, sin bondage or, you know, when you feel guilty for your sinning there, that's why it's not like it's a hidden thing. Everything is seen. Every thought 
the motive behind the thought. Right? The motive behind the thought. You can't even... You can't even... Oh, well, I... No, you didn't. Right here is the motive behind your thought. Now what do you... You can't make excuses. God knows. He wants you to choose Him. In what? Everything. Will we? No. We're Him. So it is. But we have opportunities. Opportunities to help build the Kingdom of God. Kingdom of Heaven. Which is the Holy Spirit growing through people. The lost. The unsaved. Being saved. By what? Sharing seeds. We're told that we can plant seeds. That's what God said. You guys plant the seeds. And if there's a seed planted needs water, water it. That's don't avoid fellowship, right? Uh, make disciples. Teach them. After you planted seeds, which is what? Share the gospel. Make disciples. Pray for the saints. This prayer is answered. And never forsake fellowship because we need the fellowship. We water each other. We sharpen our swords, right? So we just need to listen. Do what we're told. And we'll get along better in life all the way around. And trust Him. Have faith. Oh my goodness, you just need faith. He will always supply. Like right now, I'm I'm as close to being stressed out as possible because I'm almost out of something. But He'll supply something. He always does. Right? Always. He just does. He said He would. And He's never lied. So, I trust Him. And that's what He wants from us. I'm going to end this. It just hit me with the Lord's Prayer. Um, because I believe it's a really, really good prayer. And the Holy Spirit will take your heart's needs, your heart's prayer to God, if you pray this prayer to God. Okay? So this is the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I love that prayer. Um, covers pretty much everything in your life for the day. And the other one we should probably get into is Ephesians 6, what is it, 10 through 20, um, the full armor of God. You really need to realize what our battle is, and it's a battle of uh, powers and principalities and spirits. That's why prayer is so important for us. God hears your prayer. All right, guys, I'm going to end it here and tell you I love you all. And hope, hopefully this helps somebody get to know their Heavenly Father a little better, a little closer, know a lot better and a lot closer so that you can really trust Him. Because He's God. So if the Creator of absolutely everything who's in control of absolutely everything says, I want to call you my child. Will you please trust me? Right? Because if you do, if you do, Joshua 1, verse 7, go read that. Fear not. Follow these commandments. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. And if you do, you'll prosper wherever you go. And if you do, I'll be with you wherever you go. That's what God said. Trust Him. Follow Him. Love Him. And have some faith in Him. Alright guys, I love you. Have a great day.